Absolutely, they started it. They planted the seed. They birthed. They they created this. They created yeah. this. So. They created this, so you know this is their child, and they they are very clear on um, what they're trying to convey to the audience. So I trust them. Um, I mean, look at the work they've both done. I just knew I was in good hands. I was in a safe place to to challenge the audience, and to me, that's what art is supposed to do. It shouldn't be safe. You look to art to challenge your daily thinking as a human. And how does that fit together with it being on network TV? Like, you, usually this kind of ambitious stuff is on HBO. Or, you know, I think that's what excited me most because yeah. it's something that hasn't been done yet. Um, and I, I mean, if you paid attention to the type of work that I do, I kind of like ballsy work. Yeah. I'm not afraid to do it because I know, I know that that's my talent. That's my knack. I bring truth to typically stereotypical characters. I bring a certain truth to it. Uh, so people don't judge it in a way where, you know, they they feel for the character as opposed uh, to judging. And that's, that's, that's my job as an actor. You know, who wants to play the bad guy everybody hates? You enter like a freaking bombshell. <laughs> I, I love your entrance. Thank you. And your chemistry with Terrence is freaking insane. Talk to me about working with him. Well, when I read the script, I didn't know who Lucius was going to be. So I remember um, Lee Daniels Skyped me from Japan. And, you know, it was I was supposed to be interviewed. He was interviewing me. And I just remember, I just left Person of Interest, so I was pretty much done with television. I wanted to do more features. And I remember telling my, my team, I was like, I don't want TV. Do not send me any more television scripts. It's too caged. I can't breathe. I can't, you know. And so then my manager, of course, Vincent Cimarroncioni, calls me. He's like, I got this incredible television script. And I'm screaming at him. Why? I told you I'm not doing television anymore. So he's like, trust me, just read the script. At the time I was doing a play, so I went all the way back to the basics because I just felt like creatively I needed it. I didn't care. I just picked it up one day and I was like, let me read this. I couldn't put it down. And like I said, it's, I, was ner I was shaking like this after I read it because I knew Fox was interested. They had already come to see my play twice. Yeah. So I knew, I was like, they, gonna, they want me for this. So I knew I had to be serious in my approach. I couldn't just be like string them along. I had to be serious. So I was like, oh God, I have to make up. I have to make a decision. So then it's like, well, who's going to play Lucius? I read it. I was like, I immediately immediately thought Terrence. I don't know. It just came to me. Did you suggest him? I did. But I didn't know that they already went out to somebody else. I never knew that. So again, I didn't I was I didn't care about television anymore. And so I was like if it's Terrence, I'll do it. If not, good luck with your project. I wasn't even hired yet. <laughs> I wasn't even hired. But I wasn't desperate. You know, I felt like I had done television. You know, I was ready to move on to more feature films. So I honestly wished him well on his project. And you know that saying, like, don't be too desperate because it'll come to you? I promise you that's how this came to me. I was literally willing to walk away from Cookie because I just literally, I saw me and Terrence. I just knew not only that, I saw Terrence for several reasons. I saw Terrence because when you say hip-hop to people that don't understand the world of hip-hop, they get scared. They believe that this is a subject matter that doesn't pertain to them. Yeah. You know, but if you think about really what how hip-hop was born, it was born out of a desperation of, you know, schools being taken out of the hood, instruments, music class. So what became instruments was the turntables. What became instruments was the voices. Those were stories that were not being told. I get it. I'm, I'm hip-hop. So in my mind, I was like, in order for this, move, this show to sell mainstream, whoever plays Lucius has to be someone that's non-threatening, has to be someone that's going to class up this thing we call hip-hop. And because Terrence is so not hip hop, Terrence, for God's sake, listens to country music. Me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's so not hip hop that we won't get caught up in that. We'll get caught up in how incredible the acting is. You know, and, and that, that's why I thought Terrence was was good for the role. Is this the biggest risk you've taken? No, not at all. What do you like best about playing Cookie? I, I think I like. 
she, I'm an uninhibited in life. Just me personally, Taraji. I'm comfortable in who I am. I'm a woman in my 40s. I've been there, did it, done it. I've raised my kid. I'm very confident. Um, I love how Cookie is so brave. There's no buffer. Don't ask her her opinion if you don't want to hear the truth. She's, she's family first. She takes her family very seriously, so much so that she sacrificed 17 years of her life. She didn't snitch. She could have snitched. They all did dirt together, her and Lucius. But she knew that he was the breadwinner. He was the talent. She was the brains behind the operation. And had she snitched and put him in jail, how was her children going to eat? What I love about this is that I'm not condoning selling drugs, but I am from the hood. I am from the period of the hood where crack was dropped off. I saw families being destroyed by that. Um, I saw a lot, I lost a lot of friends to the drug game. You know, I understand it. I'm not condoning selling drugs, but what I'm saying is that what Cookie and Lucius did was they broke a cycle that you see a lot in the hood. You know, families and generations on welfare, families and generations caught up in that cycle of selling drugs and doing this. And, you know, things like that most humans, privileged humans, don't even have to think about because that's not their lifestyle. But what Cookie and Lucius were able to do, God, it was horrible selling drugs to your own people. But what they did was they broke a generation. They broke a cycle. Their children would never know the hood. She served her time. It was t horrible. She had to do 17 years. She did it. But it was about her family. It was about her family's survival. It was about her family coming out of that, that, that hood mentality. My sons will never have to do what me and my husband had to do. What? Speaking of family, there's a really powerful scene, a flashback scene, where she stops Lucius from beating the gay son. The gay son oh, absolutely. Like, how, how difficult was it to film that scene versus coming back in as cooking seven years out of prison? Man, let me tell you, that, that scene, I've seen this pilot a total of maybe 20 times. Every time we get to that scene, I know it's coming. I have to brace myself. It's almost like Boys in the Hood. You know Ricky's going to die? You know it. How many times have we seen this, right? But every time I catch it on cable, when Ricky catches that bullet, I'm destroyed all over again like I've never seen it before. And that's what that scene does because we've never approached it like that. No one has ever dealt with the issue of being gay, of being a black gay, uh, gay male in America. No one has touched that in the way that we're doing it on primetime network television. He, Lucius is actually the consciousness of a lot of people that can't say it because they'll be nailed to the cross. You know, a lot of people still feel like that. Taraz, let me ask you this. Um, we, we talk about, we talk about, you know, everyone is all getting caught up in the first week, with the numbers of the first week, the first year. What would Empire mean 10 years from now, 15 years from now? I mean, I guess what it will mean is whatever, it, it's, what I love about it, it's it's piggybacking on what is actually happening in the music industry today. So as long as we have music, you have an empire. I mean, there's always going to be stories to tell from the music industry. Music ain't going nowhere. There's always going to be a record label to talk about. <laughs> you know, but we can do this for a hundred thousand years. Music is not going anywhere. Thank you. Yeah.